Hey everyone, welcome back to the Pathways to Happiness podcast. I hope you are doing fantastically well. My name is Nina Lavon and I am so ready for today's topic. We are going to be talking about how to escape the cycle of constantly living in survival mode and just getting by in our life and how to instead get inspired by life again and truly begin to thrive and enjoy ourselves. If you feel like you are just kind of stuck, like you are going through the motions but not really getting anywhere, we are going to talk about how we can stop this vicious cycle and shift from just existing into taking action and rebooting our life if it really needs to be rebooted. I have definitely been there in my own life and it's a topic many of you requested over the last few months, so I thought today would be the perfect time to really sit down and address it. But before we jump into today's topic, as always, I just want to thank you so much for your support, both here and on the Nina Love on YouTube channel. I appreciate you being here so much, and if you are new, please take a moment to subscribe. We'd love you to stay connected, and also please keep sending in your topic requests and your questions. I will give you all my contact information at the end of the podcast in case you do not have it, so you can send that in. And with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into today's topic. So like I said, today I just wanted to have an honest conversation with all of you and really kind of check in because this year is remarkably starting to come to a close, which seems really weird because it feels like it was just kind of starting. But at the end of any year, I like to begin to reflect on where I am in my own life. And certainly this is something that I encourage my clients to do as well. Because when we don't stop and pause, we miss things that are worth noticing or we keep going in a certain direction or at a certain pace and it's not always the best. But once a ball is in motion, of course, it stays in motion and sometimes it takes us years to realize that we are not living our best life or in some cases, not living a life that even resembles what we'd want it to. So today I just wanted to pause with you all and ask you how you are doing. And let's be really honest here. Are you feeling like you are thriving in your life? That you are as happy or as fulfilled as you could be? Or has it been a really difficult or chaotic year? Are you feeling like you are more just surviving than really enjoying your life or getting the most out of it. And if it is the latter, just know that you are in the same boat as many, many people. And this was, again, a boat I was in for years and years. So I am quite familiar with what it feels like. And it's funny because when I was living in survival mode, I really had no idea until the very end of that time period. And I was finally able to have kind of like a reality check and start to work on myself and work myself out of it when that happened. But it's actually surprising looking back how long it took me to realize that that's really what was happening for me. Survival mode is something that can become necessary during really challenging situations and it can actually be kind of helpful short term because it allows us to keep doing the things that we need to do during difficult times. But when we live this way for too long or it becomes really a habit or a lifestyle, it's going to start to really affect both our mental and physical health. And I know the problem for many of us is that once we're in this mode, we have no idea how to get out or we are too busy to even notice we are in in this mode. We are just running and trying to keep up with everything all the time. Instead of thriving in our life, we are just trying to make it through the day. And that really becomes the goal, just being able to handle the circumstances and then get enough rest so we can kind of repeat the cycle for the next day. It's really exhausting. And I remember how feeling this way just sucked the life out of me. I felt 
so tired all the time. And it makes sense when we lose our spark and our inspiration and we feel like no matter what we do, we simply don't make any progress. It can really wear us down, again, both mentally and physically. It's like being on a hamster wheel. It's all about just being able to make it through that 24 hours. We lose sight of any kind of long-term plan because we are just dealing with what's on our plate and we're not really directing our lives anymore. It takes all the energy we have just to do the bare minimum. And like I said, spending too much of our time in this survival mode can really have some pretty negative consequences. And so that's why we are doing this little check-in today to see where we are at, to recognize the signs if we are indeed in survival mode. So we can talk about how it is we wound up there in the first place and to talk about how to drag ourselves out of it because it is definitely time for us to feel better and to start truly thriving and enjoying our lives if that is simply not where we are at right now. And I also want to make very clear that really today we're not talking about the type of true survival mode that can happen when we are experiencing trauma or if we are in a true life crisis. Now, in these situations, we often need the help and support from a mental health professional. So if that is a better description of your own situation, I absolutely encourage you to seek out professional support to help you through this difficult time. But if you are more just feeling like your life is blah, because it just kind of consists of checking things off of boxes and you just feel like you have forgotten the importance of having fun and expanding your life in a positive way, or if your life has been so busy that you haven't felt you've had really the time to live the type of fulfilling life that you wish you could be living, then today's podcast will hopefully help you recognize this fact and to offer you some encouragement to take your life back. So I want to go ahead and start by talking about some of the signs that might indicate that we are in survival mode. And I know a lot of these may seem obvious, but, you know, when you're in a situation, a lot of times you don't notice until someone actually asks you or brings it up. And also keep in mind that it's likely that a few of these would ring a bell for you either way and that everybody has bad days here and there. But if a lot of these would get a check mark from you, it's probably something that you want to pay attention to. So the first thing is that you are starting to overreact to everything. So little things set you off. You overanalyze everything. You take everything in the worst possible way. You are more sensitive than usual. And everything just kind of seems like a big deal. Number two, you feel like it takes all of your energy just to get through the day. You are no longer able to really remember the big picture or think about the big picture in your life or focus on your dreams and goals. So you're just in that day-to-day mode. Number three, you are often waiting until the last minute to get things done and you are not working to your full capacity. Everything kind of feels like an emergency. This is something that was definitely a huge issue for me. I just felt like I was constantly putting out fires and probably a lot of the situations were actually really minor, but I always just felt so rushed. It was like there were so many things that felt like they weren't getting accomplished. And then when I did actually accomplish things, I always felt like I could have done a better job. So I knew I wasn't working to my best capacity. It was just the best I could do at that time. So this is a huge one for me. Number four is that you often feel like there is too much on your plate. So you feel like you are overwhelmed and that there's too much on your shoulders. And again, this can be because really your schedule is legitimately overstuffed and your life is truly out of balance. Or it could be just the perception that we have too much to do. 
I know when I feel overwhelmed, I always feel like I have a thousand things to do. But sometimes when I list it all out, it's really not that bad. So again, this one could mean real stuff is on our plate or just the perception that there is too much on our plate. Number five is you've started pushing people away without thinking because you feel like you don't have any time or energy to deal with them. And so maybe you don't text them or you're not really going out with them anymore. But enjoying your relationships is something that has either become less of a priority or you just simply feel like you do not have the time or energy to spend with other people. I know this is the case for a lot of people when they are in survival mode. Those important relationships really take a back seat, which is very unfortunate. Okay, number six, you find it hard to sleep. You ruminate over problems and you always kind of feel tired and have low energy levels. This is something that I definitely experienced during this time in my life and it became a vicious cycle because I know for me, I started worrying about not sleeping, which of course made it you know even harder to sleep. So if you are having sleep issues, it could be again because you're in that survival mode. Number seven, you feel like you are always rushing around frantically, but you can never get caught up. This is probably the one that's most obvious, but it's something that I see all the time from so many people. Just that frantic feeling of not being able to get what you need to to do done. There's never that time where you're really able to just relax and say, okay, I'm done for the day. I did what I could. It's just instead that constant battle of pushing ourselves or feeling guilty because we feel like we could be doing more. Number eight, you are feeling anxious more than you usually do. You're feeling like it's difficult to keep things in perspective and everything seems urgent and stressful. Yes, I remember that well. Number nine, you can't remember the last time you really laughed or felt like you were truly enjoying your day. And this is huge because I think we sometimes think that that is not an important aspect of our lives. And that is a hugely important aspect of our life, enjoying life and having fun and being able to laugh at ourselves even and laugh at at life and certainly laugh at funny situations. These are things that really make life life enjoyable. And when we are, again, just surviving and we're not thriving, this is something that can get lost. And it is so sad when that happens. So that's something we definitely want to pay attention to. And number 10 is kind of uh, related to that. And that's you feel like maybe you've lost enthusiasm and you feel like you're just going through the motions in life. Maybe you don't spend as much time with your hobbies or doing the things that you usually enjoy. You don't feel as inspired as you normally would. You might have the attitude that life is something that we are just kind of enduring instead of trying to really live it to its fullest. Number 11, you are at the mercy of everyone and everything. Your life feels out of control, like it's going forward without you, and you are just kind of dragging behind, trying to keep up. Number 12, your memory and your focus levels are at an all-time low. You might have difficulty concentrating or being present in the moment. I remember I would just be looking at a book and turning the pages and not actually comprehending what I was reading. It's like my eyes would look at the page and my brain wasn't even involved. I just had zero focus. So this was definitely a huge one for me. Number 13, you are constantly looking over your shoulder, waiting for the other shoe to drop, just trying to spot problems all the time. This was another thing that I had an issue with very often when I was in survival mode. I was so hyper vigilant because deep down I was just so used to problems coming that I was trying to spot them or identify them before they happened because I didn't want to feel surprised because I was just so tired from life already. And this is a tough one because we end up just adding so much to our plate because we are catastrophizing everything and reacting to problems that aren't even there in a lot of cases. 
Number 14, you are neglecting some of your basic needs or part of your old routines like exercising or taking time for yourself to meditate or practice yoga or whatever you do for enjoyment or for relaxation. Self-care really tends to go right down the drain when we are in survival mode because we forget how important it is for one and we also a lot of times just don't feel like we have time for it and of course when we are in the times of our lives when we are struggling like this, that's when we really need self-care the most. But again, when we're in this mode, we do tend to neglect some of the things that would absolutely make us feel better. And finally, we have made it to number 15, which is our last one, and that is you are acting impulsively more often. So Maybe we are eating more or we're spending excessive money or we're engaging in activities that we normally wouldn't. And this type of behavior really makes sense because in a way we're trying to give ourselves a quick fix. We're trying to feel better in the moment. And of course, the problem is that the things that we do that are impulsive are usually not in our best interest and can sometimes even be harmful for us long term. But it's easy to see why we may have the impulse in the first place. So nobody enjoys feeling the way that we do when we're in survival mode. So again, we're just trying to make ourselves feel better in that moment. So if any of these things feel like it is really describing you right now, please do not despair. Truly, the first step is recognizing that we are in survival mode. And that's something that, again, in my own case, really took way too long. So hopefully, this is something that if it's ringing bells for you, you've really identified it. And again, just to reiterate, if any of these things are interfering with your daily function, or if you are in crisis, or you have experienced trauma, and you feel like you need additional support, please do not hesitate to reach out to a mental health professional. But either way, please know also that there is hope for change. We don't have to go on living our lives in a way like we feel like we're in a race that we are losing. There are so many things that we can do to shift our lives and bring it back in a positive direction. And one of the big things that we need to do to start this process is to backtrack and figure out how we got here in the first place. Is our life out of balance? Do we actually really have too much on our plate? Are we in too many stressful situations? Are we not taking time for ourselves? Are we too focused on the wants and needs of other people? Do we somehow equate being really busy with being successful? This is something that's actually true for a lot of people. In a sense, they are really choosing to be this busy, maybe not consciously, but definitely are in the habit of stuffing their life beyond capacity. Now, this is something that I was absolutely guilty of myself, and I really felt that you needed to be really busy to be successful. And like I said, this is a thought that is shared by many. We even know through research that this is true, and that also this this is a recent shift. Studies show that prior to 2015, when people were asked what the mark of success was and what they felt were social media images that reflected success, they had answers like photos of people drinking cocktails or being on vacation or participating in leisure activities like playing golf or sitting by a pool. But after that time, the studies then showed that appearing busy was the biggest indicator of perceived success in other people. So you probably noticed that there was a, a social shift of this happening as well, where people, when you ask them how they were doing, they would say things like, oh, I'm really, really busy, but I'm good. They would mention the busy being busy was something we collectively decided that we should show off. So that could be a factor too. There could be many factors that contributed to bringing us into survival mode. Maybe we had a period of time that really was 
just way more stressful in comparison to how we usually lead our life. And we just forgot to get off that speeding train. That was definitely a factor for me. I got to a point where I probably could have taken at least a little time out for myself, but I never even thought to. I was so used to living my life out of balance and putting everybody else first and never saying no and having way too much to do that, you know, I really never even considered the fact that I should take time for myself or slow down or really question my lifestyle. So let's start here. Start by mentally retracing your steps from exactly where you are right now to a place in time mentally when you didn't feel this way. What changed externally and internally? How are you and your life different now? And if we really take the time to analyze, we are likely going to see some significant factors that led us to this point. Lifestyle changes, attitude changes, situational changes, some things that were in our control and some things that were out of our control. But if we are feeling different now, then of course there is a reason for that. And knowing what, you know, really that was is going to be the basis of how we can start creating solutions for ourselves because we are going to see clearly what isn't working for us. And when there are factors that are out of our control, we can still make improvements because we can still change our perceptions and our reactions. And remember, that as we are thinking about making changes, we have to be gentle with ourselves. We can't beat ourselves up for the situation that we are in. Our brains are masters at adapting. And unfortunately, sometimes they can adapt to unhealthy patterns and unhealthy environments. We simply do not always automatically adapt in a way that would be the most beneficial or helpful to us. If we did, life would be a lot easier. But Unfortunately, at at some point, we have to be the ones to actively step in and get the balls rolling in another direction. We have no other choice. We've got to have the realization that we are stuck in a cycle of survival mode and tell ourselves that it is time to break the cycle, which again, we can absolutely do. We've just got to really analyze the situation so we can figure out how we got there and to make certain that we never put ourselves in the same space. So that really is the first step and a huge part of the process. But now we also have to look at the other end of this. We have to figure out how to get unstuck. So let's start by looking at what we know through research is linked to having a life that feels well lived and fulfilling and that is happy for the most part and see maybe what is missing there. What aspects of our life have we been kind of leaving out that would make us feel like we were thriving? And I want to point out that this concept of thriving is perfectly characterized by one of my favorite psychologists. His name is Martin Seligman. I'm sure if you have listened to this podcast in the past, you have heard me mention his name before. He's sometimes referred to as the father of positive psychology. And in his book, flourish. He shares his research about what it really means to thrive or to to flourish. And he found that it is largely based on five factors. And we can remember them by the acronym PERMA. And it's positive emotions, engagement and flow, positive relationships, meaning and accomplishment. And I have a whole video on this PERMA model on the Nina Levon YouTube channel if you want to look it up again the acronym PERMA, P-E-R-M-A. So the first one here is positive emotions. Are we experiencing positive emotions right now? Probably not, or probably not to the extent that is necessary to feel like we are enjoying our life. So that's something to think about. The next one is engagement and flow. So are we participating in activities that we love so much that we lose track of time that we are so involved in that really engage us and inspire us? Probably not, again. 
How about our relationships? That is the R in this acronym. Are we spending time nurturing our relationships and having positive relationships and spending time with people that uplift us or that we care about and love with? Again, probably not. Are we feeling right now that our life has meaning? Sometimes when we are going through difficult situations, we can get through them because it's meaningful. There is, you know, an aspect about it that makes it worthwhile. Is that there for you right now? Do you feel like your your life really has meaning? And if not, again, you're probably going to feel like you're just in that survival mode. And lastly, accomplishment. Now, for accomplishment, we're not just talking about accomplishing the things that our boss needs us to do or, you know, that we need to do for our kids' school. We're not talking about these tasks that, yes, are necessary. We're talking about the things that really make us feel like we are having true achievements in our life and accomplishments, that we are reaching goals. If we don't feel that way again, that is going to make us feel like we're not really thriving in life. And that could possibly be attached with that feeling of living in survival mode. So for me, this list was almost laughable when I was in survival mode because none of these aspects were priorities for me at all, not because I didn't value them, but because I wasn't making time for any of them, really. It was just like a wake-up call for understanding how far I had gotten from the best path for me. So if this is, again, ringing bells for you, how can you bring yourself back, back to your best life and your best self? Or even how can you go beyond even what your best life has been so far? How can we succeed at really feeling that we are thriving? One of the things that we can do is to step back and reconnect with ourselves. So Survival mode oftentimes really involves disconnection and connection is really key in learning how to live instead of survive, really knowing ourselves. We need to ask ourselves from time to time, what do I need? What is my body telling me? How am I feeling? Am I tired? Did I eat today? What emotions am I feeling? Am I sad? Am I angry? Am I scared? We need to take moments to connect with ourselves and to, to listen to our needs because when we don't do this, we can just get so far from living our best life because we are never checking in with ourselves. We are never reconnecting with the person that matters most in our life, which is ourselves. And I know that our loved ones are so important, but we can't take care of them and give them our best when we are not taking care of ourselves. So we definitely need to reconnect with ourselves. Number two, we need to try to create space and balance in our life. And I remember for myself, I felt like it was impossible. There was no way that I could live a life of balance. I just had way too much work and, and too many responsibilities. And I was trying to juggle all these things. And I felt like it was impossible to create space and to, to take things off of my plate. But you know what? I sat down and I figured out ways. And for me, it even meant that I gave up watching television for two years because I was so desperate to have time to myself. But we need to find ways to create space. Maybe we need to delegate some of the tasks that we have to other people or to ask people if they could, you know, help out or watch the kids sometimes. Or, you know, we can't be shy to seek out help that would enable us to have a life that is more in balance. So we really need to spend time thinking about what shifts that we can make. And again, I know sometimes it feels like there is no shift that could be made that could improve our life or to, to offer us more time for ourselves. But when we really look at it, there is something that can be done. The third thing that we can do is to reconnect with others and to really seek out support and connections from our friends and our loved ones or our therapist if we have one and to find safe people to, to spend time with and to connect with and remind ourselves that we are not alone in 
the universe. I know so many times we feel like we are, we feel like we have to bear the weight of everything on our shoulders. And we a lot of times push people away, not even meaning to, but we're just overwhelmed and we're pushing everyone away. But in reality, a lot of times people would love to be there for us or to just, you know, listen to us talk. And oftentimes they can relate because, you know, I haven't met too many people who haven't gone through something like this at some point in their life. And connecting with others, like we talked about in the PERMA model, is so important. Relationships are really key in living a, a life that is fulfilling and happy. So if we've been neglecting our relationships, connecting with others can be an important step into starting to thrive again. The fourth thing that we can do is to schedule time for fun and for the activities that make us happy, to seek out laughter. And again, I know we have that excuse that we don't have time, blah, 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 but there is something that we can do, even if it's not that frequent. We need to have things that are enjoyable, that we can look forward to. We have to make this time for ourselves. And believe me, when we are relaxed and happy and making this time for ourselves, we are way more productive. Think about how much more you can get done when you are in a good mood, when we are just feeling so flustered and overwhelmed and we feel like everything is chaotic. It is so hard to get anything done and everything seems so difficult. So it's actually as counterproductive as it may seem, it is really in our best interest to schedule that time for fun, to make it happen, to try to incorporate things back into our life that really do make us happy. It is is important. Number five is upping the self-care and I am going to, you know, kind of lump in with that exercising. A lot of people don't think about exercise as self-care, especially if they have a negative attitude about exercising, but when we are doing something that involves cardio especially, it is an extremely effective way to help our body cope with stress. It gives us just a little buffer, first of all, from the rest of the things going on in our life. It's, it's an excuse to have me time. It's kind of, you know, it does so much for us at the, at the same time. But exercise is really important, even when we don't feel like we have time for it. We need to make time to exercise. And all the things that are involved with self-care, really getting enough sleep, eating well, just again, listening to our body, listening to our emotions and trying to fill those needs. Number six is practicing mindfulness, being present in the moment. When we are in survival mode, a lot of times we are just always in that future moment. We're thinking about those, you know, things that are to come that we're trying to, to race towards all the time, but we need to step back and be in the moment because this is the only time we have. We have this moment. We have no idea what's going to happen in the future and how important or not important that is going to be. All these things that we are catastrophizing, maybe they are not going to be big deals at all. We need to step back into this precious moment that we have right now and try to enjoy it. Try to make this moment a little bit better for ourselves. Remind ourselves of all the good that is in our life. Sometimes it can be as simple as really just going outside and just taking a breath of fresh air or looking at the stars or, you know, just having a nice cup of coffee. Just take some time to be in the moment Think about where you are at now. Stop focusing so much on the future. And also remind yourself that there are really good things happening now. There are things that you are grateful for in your life. And, and so many times when we're in survival mode, we're not thinking about any of those things. We're just thinking about all the things that we have to do. And we're not really appreciating the moments that we have and the people in our life that we have now and the situations in our life that are good or the surroundings in our life that, that are good. And sometimes even just creating a gratitude list at the end of the day, or just, you know, having some thoughts about what we are grateful for can, can help us with that. But we definitely want to try to practice mindfulness. Number seven, 
take breaks. I know from experience that crazy things happen when we do not take breaks. I never took breaks. I just kept working and working and working. I saw all my friends and family members going on vacations. I saw all their pictures on Instagram and I wasn't doing any of that. I was just, you know, just working and working and working and trying to manage everything. And guess what? People cannot do that. It is not good for us to even attempt to do that. We need to take breaks. We need to step away. Of course, we are going to feel overwhelmed when we do not do that. We need to take small breaks during the day, even just again to walk outside or to, you know, change the the air and the environment for a little bit. And then we need to take big breaks. We need to go on vacations or go on a drive. It is so important that we provide ourselves with new experiences and that we're not just constantly on that hamster wheel. We need to see new things. We need to smell new things. We need to taste new things. We need to take a break from the ordinary. We lose touch with reality when we don't do this. I know I do it at least. We start to think that problems are way bigger than they are. But when we step back, when we take a break, we can be a lot more rational a lot of times and we can start to relax a little bit. We can catch our breath and remind ourselves that this is our life and that we really are in control of our life. Number eight is to learn to question irrational or automatic negative thoughts. And this is something that I bring up in almost every podcast because I know this is something that I struggle with and so many other people struggle with. We get really tense and stressed out because we are having this negative self-talk. We are jumping to very negative conclusions. A lot of times we are, again, catastrophizing and we just have a lot of thoughts that truly are irrational that, you know, we can talk ourselves into believing them. We can convince ourselves that they are true, but oftentimes they are not. And we are suffering the same amount as if they really were true. So what I always tell people is to learn to practice cognitive behavioral therapy. This is something that we can practice as a self-therapy. This is something that's really become part of my lifestyle, part of my daily habit. And of course, we can do it with a mental health professional as well. If you do not know anything about cognitive behavioral therapy, this is something that I also have a full video about on the Nina Lavon YouTube channel if you want to check it out and learn how to work yourself through this process of reframing these negative and erratic rational thoughts into something that is much more positive and constructive in our life. So definitely check that out if you're not familiar with that. Number nine could not be any more important. It is so essential and that is to remember to treat yourself with self-love, self-compassion, and self understanding. Sometimes we get angry with ourselves when we realize we aren't living the way that we want or we wish we had done things differently or that our life situation, you know, should be something different. But we need to be kind to ourselves. We can't shame ourselves or, you know, beat ourselves up about this. Remember that we didn't ask to be in this cycle of you know, negativity or this cycle of living in survival mode. We didn't plan this. This was not an active choice that we made. Doesn't mean that maybe we didn't contribute to it, but that is kind of how life goes sometimes. You know, we have that realization now, and that's the important thing. We we can't beat ourselves up because this happened in the past. We need to be understanding. We need to support ourselves and offer ourselves that compassion that we need. We truly need to learn to be a friend to ourselves because let's face it we really need support right now we need ourselves to be a friend so just remember no matter where you are at no matter how off course your life has gotten today is a new day we're going to start to to fix it and that's a wonderful thing it's not going to be constructive in any way to make ourselves feel badly that we have gotten here most importantly we are heading now in the opposite direction in a direction that is going to make us feel much happier and much more again in control of our life And number 10 is to set long-term goals, to visualize the life that we want and to go ahead and start taking even small steps 
one at a time towards that goal. And that's great if it's a big dream and a big goal, and maybe it doesn't seem achievable right now, but it's very inspiring to think about what our future can be. And we're only limited by our thoughts. We're only limited by our dreams. We can really make our life whatever we want once we gain control of it, which is exactly what we are doing. So think, what do we want our life to be? Where do we want to get in the future? What is something that I can do right now that would help me towards that goal? You know, even if it just means that you hop on the internet and you research information about this goal or see that, you know, you will be needing this or that in the future or just reading about it or actually taking an action, a small daily action. They build up over time and they really give us hope and they make us one step closer to those achievements achievements that we talked about really help us feel like we are thriving. And even just a small step is an achievement because we are better off than we were five minutes ago. So that's something that we definitely want to think about. And another thing that we can do is to do things that show progress. I know a lot of times we are working towards goals, but we don't really see our progress. And when we have something where we can see that we've come a distance, it really gives us energy. And that's one of the things that I notice when I play guitar. I've been playing guitar forever, and it's not that I'm great at it, but what I really love about it is that I can always see when progress has been made. It is exciting for me to learn a song that I didn't know yesterday. So seeing that progress and then watching the progress build over the years is something that, you know, really gives me life passion. It makes me believe that anything is possible because I can see that when I put work into something that with time it gets better and we can apply that to every aspect of our life. So when we pick something that really shows progress like that, it can be really helpful. So, you know, decide what that might be for you. Painting or running or something that is physical is always good because you get the the extra benefit of having it be some kind of exercise as well. But just remind yourself that this moment is not your whole life. You are the artist of your life. You are designing your life. Yes, maybe we've got into a point in our life that we're not that happy with, but guess what? There is more and we are making that shift right now. Now is the time to start living again and to stop just surviving. Life is way too short for that. I don't want to live in stress and fear anymore all the time. I I was doing that for years and years and years. I'm done with that. I made the active choice to not live that way. And if that is the way you are living, I just invite you to make that choice. Remember, you are the master of your life. Redesign your life if your life needs to be redesigned. You have every power to do this. Please know that I believe in you and I know that this is possible for you and I would love to hear more about your own journey. So please feel free to leave a comment. This is a very supportive community. I would love to hear about how you are feeling right now. Go ahead and give me your check-in. I would love to hear about where you are not only right now, but what you plan to do to make it better, and if any of these things really stood out as factors that you want to change about your yourself and your life and why that is. So again, I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today and also for investing time in yourself. You are your most valuable asset. And as always, if you have questions or topic requests, please do not hesitate to send them in. You can always reach me by email. My email address is nina.lavon at gmail.com. That is spelled N-E-N-A dot L-A-V-O-N-N-E at gmail. And you can also reach me on Twitter. And my Twitter handle is at Nina Lavon. So as always, thank you so much for listening. I truly appreciate you being here and I hope the rest of your day is absolutely extraordinary. See you next time, guys. Take care.